They came over on the sixth morning and said, we just got done doing another search at their house. And we truly do not know where she's. We, and we then truly what believe happened? that they don't know. And then. And then a couple hours later. Into we, the mother Melinda's phone. And who did? The, the, police, the police, the detectives. The detectives. So the, how did they get your phone? It wasn't my phone, it was my son's phone. These are the plaintiffs, Christina and Zarul Vasquez. Christina says her 14-year-old daughter, Claudia, and the defendant's son dated, and she ended up running away from home after she got into an argument with her. No one knew where she was. The SWAT team was combing the woods for her for six days, and everyone was trying to find her. The defendants told the cops they didn't know where she was, but six days later, they found her hiding out at the defendant's house. The defendants knew she was there. They hid her from everyone. Now they have to pay the $5,000 they're seeking for pain and suffering. These are the defendants, Melinda and Christopher McManus. Melinda says she found the plaintiff's daughter was hiding in her house the day after she went missing because her son was hiding her. From what she understood, the girl was claiming she was being abused at home and her son felt he was protecting her. She's currently fighting obstruction charges in criminal court. She felt as if she was helping this girl and certainly doesn't owe the plaintiffs $5,000. They're accused of hiding a fugitive. The defendants filed a camera suit for $2,000 for harassment. All parties, please use your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Doug. You're welcome, ma'am. Okay, Christina and Zaul Vasquez, yes. you are suing Melinda and Christopher McManus who are the parents of your daughter's boyfriend for $5,000 for harboring your daughter during a time that you thought your daughter was missing. Yes, ma'am. What happened? So Friday, um, August 21st was the last day of school and my daughter had to go take a Spanish ex exam and she didn't want to go take it. Um, I told her I was going to take her phone away if she didn't go to school. We got into an argument. She ran What was away. the reason that she didn't want to take it? She said it wasn't important. She felt like she was going to fail anyway. She's how old? 14. Okay. And she just refused. And when I told her I was going to take the phone, she freaked out and ran away. Literally, physically ran away? Yes. Where did yeah. she go? She ran out our back door. We live by a wooded area um, to a side street. And that was the last place that a person, like one of the neighbors, seen her. Did and you, did you, were you home? Uh, I was at work when I got the phone. And then, yeah. so, but you were home. Yeah. Were you heading to work? Yeah, okay. I was heading to work and I have two other kids at home as well. How old are the other kids? 15 and five. So she just took off. We just, I just assumed you she'd she she be show right up. back. Uh, yeah. yeah, she right. never has, has ran away before. before so. All right, so then what happens? So then, you know, I call my husband, I explain everything. We're like, all right, we'll just let her cool off. I'm texting her like, where are you? You know, she's not responding. And then, like, come around 3 o'clock and nobody's heard from her, not even the boyfriend that she lives and breathes for at this age. How old is the boyfriend? 16. And she's 14. All right, go on. Um, and then, you know, at that point, we called the police, made the report. At that point, we it wasn't missing person. It was just a runaway. Right. And then as time, the night got later, it got darker. You know, things got more serious. She's a 14-year-old girl. She has a little bit of mental health issues, you know, Right. That we're dealing with. So we were just worried. We didn't know. And their son was literally the only person that my daughter spoke to. And we have the phone records. And So, but I assumed that it was okay. So did you go to their house and talk to them to find out if your daughter we, was there? We and, went the next day and just asked, have they seen her? Did you talk to the boy yourself? The, the boyfriend comes yeah. out. He said that she, uh, when she was saying that she was running away, she said, I'm running away and I'm going to my, a friend of mine's house. And that, and I'm that not she shut off the you. phone and he never heard from her again. Right, that That's not, what he said. So the police pursued, the police took this very seriously. Yeah. Right. She was missing for we how many as well. days? Well, six of nights. course you did. Six nights. Six nights? Six nights. Six nights. So, yeah. so what's happening for those six days? The police so, are having an all-point search? We had six detectives, 
three at night, three during the day, 24 hours, searching, community searching, um, SWAT teams in the water. Flyers. Ward. Flyers. Helicopters. Hound, helicopters. Helicopters. Bloodhound dogs. SWAT, SWAT teams. teams. Community searches. So I spoke with them. They no didn't leads, know. no leads, and then Nothing. what happens? Well, I mean, basically, we feared the worst because... Well, you should, at that point. Just did, now, the, the, did they have the detectives convinced that the detectives would come to my house? Because as a mother, I'm like, that that boy, she lives and breathes for him something. He, he's got to know something. So the detectives are coming to my house telling me, I really don't think he has. Is, like, that's how convincing he was. They searched that house about six times. Searched your house? They searched their house six times, me. at least. They came over on the sixth morning and said, we just got done doing another search at their house. And we truly do not know where she is. We, we truly believe happened? that they don't know. And then, and then a couple hours later. Into we, the mother, Melinda's phone. And who did? The, the police, the, police, the, detectives. the detectives. So how did they get your phone? It wasn't my phone, it was my son's phone. How did they get, okay. so they, they, handed got, it well, over. they should have gotten his they phone from the beginning. It, they but, confiscated it. No, but when you say confiscated it, you mean like this? Took it? Yes, they So found, at this point, they found a message to his mother asking her to distract dad because Claudia has to go to the bathroom. And then the detective said, that's it. They went in and then they found her. They didn't waste no time. They didn't knock. They just raided the house. Where was that's she? Under Underneath the bed. his bed. Whose bed? The son's bed, Tyler's bed. Show me the report. Do you have the report? Yes. Hand it over, please. Mom, mission impossible. She needs to pee. Mommy, how are we supposed to occupy daddy? Respondent, that's your son. I'm trying to think of a way right now because she has to get downstairs and back up without him seeing. What? What is this? Uh, no, put your hand down, daddy. You're the one they were trying to occupy. You're yes, the daddy in this, right? Yes, ma'am. Why don't you tell me what's going on, mommy? That was the first day she was there and I told my son he could not have her at my house. He needed to get her out. I thought she was gone. I'm sorry. Did you tell that to the police? No. And that so is when fault. the police were looking for this child, you didn't tell them she was here. I thought I was keeping her safe. Because Why? I, because she told me she was being abused. By whom? Her parents. How? She says she gets beat. She's coming to school with black eyes. She had a- Have you ever seen her go to school with a black eye? No, but when she came to my house, she had a huge goose egg on her head. A huge goose egg, did you take a picture? No. Okay, because I saw the pictures that the police took. It wasn't a huge goose egg, it was, I did see marks. Now, let me ask you a question. Why didn't you just tell the police that? Because then she would be safe. You could just turn her over to the police because the police were at your house on the 21st. Why didn't you just turn her over, turn her over to the police? I wasn't home when the police were there. Why didn't you pick up the phone and call the police when you heard they came to your house? That's, that's on me. Why did you lie to the police? I thought I was keeping her safe. Over and over you lied to the police. Each day they came to your house and you lied. When did you find out that you were harboring a missing child? When, uh, first of all, I didn't know the whole time. Um, and the message that you said that they were trying to distract me because they didn't want me to see her because they knew I was gonna call the cops. Because I could lose. Did you end up getting charged for obstruction? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, you got charged for obstruction. What's going on with your criminal case? It's still pending. Do you understand that while you kept the location of that child secret, because I don't believe for a second, oh, I told him to, I told him not to have her there. She was found hiding under his bed in your house. Six days. Do you understand that there were parents suffering for six days while you did this? Do you understand how lame your answer to me, I thought I was protecting her, is when there are police looking for her who could protect her? Yes, Your Honor. She's hiding under a bed of your 16-year-old son? What control do you have over your 16-year-old son? What did you do when you found out? Me? Yeah, you. The cops had to get between us because I was throwing them out of the house for lying to me and for harboring a minor in my What house. are you thinking? Are you an adult? Are you a mother? Is that your actual son? Yeah. How is it that you could allow something like this to go on for six days? A manhunt looking for a missing 14-year-old girl who hasn't come home in six days, yeah. and you know where she is. You know where she is. Did your wife keep this from you for how long? For the whole time, yeah. Your Honor. There's no, uh, I told him, I told him, to, I told him that, to, that she had, he had to take her out of there. Yeah. 
and that's special because she spent six days there. Your Honor, they didn't barge into my house. They knocked and asked permission to go up and look. And as every other time, I, did, I gave them the permission. And what I don't understand was where was she all those permission times? Why don't you tell me, since you're the inside man, tell me where she was, Melinda. I don't know. You'd have well, to Well, every time the police knocked, would you go up and tell your son, hey, they're here? I wasn't home wasn't every home. single time. I was at work. Now that everything happened, I presume that as parents, you have sat your son down and gotten to the bottom of what occurred. So where oh, yeah. was she every time the police came? Storage area. We have a house that has a big storage area in the up, up in the second floor. There's so they would hear a knock and she would go to the storage area? That's right. And where was she the rest of that time? Judge, How do you not know that honestly, there's a 14 year old know. living in your house for six days? The, I honestly did not you know. You never she walk was into there. your son's room? Judge, I'm a certified youth therapist. I could lose my job for this. That's not my question. My question is you never walk into your son's room? Um, Usually upstairs, no, because when I do, his room is trashed and it upsets me. I go up there once a week. That has a total ring of truth. <laughs> so you didn't find your wife was acting hinky? How long have you been married to her? We've been together for 25 years. And you didn't find that she was acting a little hinky? No, ma'am. No judge. And did she, let me ask you a question. You say, you know, they had a, the police had to stand between me and my son. What'd you do when you found out your wife knew the whole time? I uh, my wife's heart is a lot bigger than her brain. I mean, her I brain her. is about this big. And I don't know about how big her heart is because your wife is massively, massively out of line to harbor someone else's child. I agree. That's not a heart thing, okay? You have no idea. Do you know what you put these parents through? Do you know the suffering they went through? Do you know the tax dollars that you spent by having this massive manhunt with he helicopters going on while you kept your little mouth shut about her whereabouts? Do you understand the amount of suffering that you poured on these people? Yes, Your Honor. Do you? Yes. I hope they seek jail time against you. She's never even I'm worried apologized. that that won't happen. What'd She's you say? never apologized, of ever. No. Apologize! I'm very sorry for harboring. Yeah, can you look at me in my eyes, though? That's I'm very point. sorry for harboring your daughter. I should have never done it. I was taking her word, and I didn't know what was going on, and it's my fault. I don't it is. For a second, it is. never looked at me. The Not six years, seconds. the six, it yeah. is. The six days of suffering are completely your fault. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. Were these parents wrong by not telling the plaintiffs and not telling the cops? Absolutely, because in this world, justice is very important. And uh, the decent and the right thing to do and the moral thing to do, and I can speak as a rabbi and say that, is they had to report it. To the cops? Yes. Not necessarily to the parents of the girl, but to no, the cops? To the cops. Oh, that's interesting. What do you say? I think they should have at least told the parents where the daughter was, and if they had concerns, go to the police. They're liable. Fair enough. Good points here. Going inside the courtroom. Now, what's going on with your daughter now? Um, we have her in counseling. She has a mentor. We're all in family counseling as well. How is it going? Well, with the interruption mm. from their family, it's not going well mm. at all. Tell me what you mean by that. Um, every day my husband and I will leave to work. She sneaks out. She goes to their house. The father told the officers she can come here any she wants because there's no order protection between Claudia and her. Even though- Why would you, can I just ask you a question? Why are you yes. nodding? Why would you guys invite the 14 year old back to your house after all this? This was after the judge upstate had said that her and Tyler could see each other. And Why would you no want story. her and Tyler to see her? Why would you want this to continue? You have just, zero control over your child? No, He's 16. I have all control over Do all you? Three then of my why sons. would you not want to put the kibosh on this because when it can he, only lead to some kind of trouble? It was legal. I, that's not my question, is it? No, ma'am, but no, no, Your Honor, it's not, but it was legal, and all I wanted to do was follow the laws. And is if it? The, the judge. Because you could follow the law and not have her in well, your I was house. Supervised. Considering that you were harboring her, willingly not. or not, and <laughs> that your wife is charged with illegally harboring her and obstruction justice. So why would you want to continue to have her there and to, to, to flower this relationship? The judge at home said that there was no restraining order and they were allowed you to see You nodded each your other. head when she said that you had said she's welcome there anytime. She is, as long as it's legal. Right. And supervised, which the, the judge supervised didn't say, by but him, I, by me. Who's but. supervising? Oh, all of a sudden you're home now all the time and you know what's going on? I, Six days there was a fugitive in your house, a runaway child, but now you're all over it and you know what's going on and supervising stuff. 
He's 16 and in love. I mean, he's very depression and he likes her and he loves her. And Your Honor, the probation officer went over to their house and told them, Claudia is not allowed to be here. Oh, whatsoever. well then why don't you go to a judge and get it's, them arrested or why don't you so go to- They you, can't arrest her because she's only 14. Not her, him. Well, we just keep trying. We, we, we keep, send the police there. We keep there, trying to have them arrested. And they just all they'll do is they'll remove Claudia and take her home. So on August 28th, she was there. We've had it. We call the police. We send them there. They send her home. Again, now that's the same day the anonymous CPS reports called in on us. Also, oh, let's talk about so that. So the 29th, oh, yeah, wait. So CPS Who filed a CPS complaint. This phone call is supposedly from my 14-year-old daughter who doesn't even have a phone, but she does because Melinda got her a phone. And then there was an anonymous report. I, I, don't, I don't understand. I don't understand how uh, another set of parents can decide they're going to parent this your child. This is our frustration. I'm right. sorry, and right. that there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing. There has to be something you can do well, about it. Well, their son turned 17 on September 4th, and we told our daughter that if she has any contact with him, that we will be pressing the statutory rape charges. That is the only level up that we have had. So we're trying, you know, schools got them separated. I told her, you I said, are setting your son up for I told a real her, I said, one problem. day at their house, I'm calling the cops. Statutory rapes are being charged. I already we, met with my lawyer. No, I don't want to go. do that to a kid and ruin his life. Well, I met with my lawyer to make sure. So when I do I act on this, I want to make proper. sure that the 17-year-old was right. When she does get along with him, the lawyer said, yep. let's go. But we, it's just a matter of timing right now. Yes, it's been very, hard. So we're just waiting hard. patiently. If you really do have a lawyer you're talking to, yes. file that lawsuit now so that there's a court order so that you don't have to rely on anybody else but that judge to see to it that they don't interfere with your efforts to regain control over your wayward 14-year-old daughter. Yes, That's ma correct, ma'am. But do it. Don't wait any longer. I've, I no, tried to done. get order of protections, but because we're not related and she's a minor, they wouldn't give them to me. You're I don't right. understand. She's a minor, and that's why it should be granted. That's what I don't understand. They, but if you can't get it that way, then go into court for it. Okay. Now, what is this iPhone 6 Plus, Ugg boots, and sweater? Well, Those are the things she ran away with that Friday morning, never to be seen again which was reported to the CPS worker. Melinda had it. And then I have a message from the detective saying the dad says they don't have it, but I've never seen any How of How do you properties. know Melinda had it with that phrase um, you said? My CPS worker said, I can try to get you the- That's not the same as knowing Belinda had it. Do you have something from the CPS worker saying that? That's the thing she couldn't release. She can't give, she can't give us that. The case. I don't understand why not. Because you guys ended up taking open. time off for, lost from work. You're suffering for pain and suffering for, according to you, a false claim with CPS and harassment. Right. Let right. me hear from you guys on the falsity of the CPS claim. Did you call that in? No. The, when she went to the hospital on the day, she cho Claudia chose on the day she was found to go to the hospital, the social worker at the, the hospital contacted CPS. We didn't contact them. I haven't contacted them. I haven't made any false reports. Let the me hospital see, you have some it. text between uh, your son and your daughter, correct? Is there something this, funny to you? No, Your Honor, I just wanted okay, to show you Okay, because you keep breaking picture, into smile, and I'm trying to understand why you keep breaking into I just smile. I it's could, something that's utterly heartbreaking, and it, you're doing it, it now, too. I agree, but it's what yeah. they're saying. It's making me smile because There's it's nothing funny. funny about what they're saying. They're lying. That that's lying shouldn't make you smile. Okay. Under I, no circumstances should there be a smile on your face. I apologize, Your Honor. Let's talk about the text between the kids. Um, oh. Sorry. Right. Apologize. Who's talking to who in these texts? Jay, it's Jay. Tyler and Claudia, my daughter and, their, and son. their son. I'm telling you, that blank is definitely the moves I'm trying to torture her with you. That'd yes, be the literal so funniest true. blank if she saw us pull up as torturers. I could imagine her being so scared knowing we're about to blank her up. I don't care, I'll go with you if I have to. I just don't wanna leave your arms again. I hate waiting when it comes to you. I lose way too much patience and get way moody. I wish we didn't have to wait, knowing we both wanna see each other so much. She responds, I just miss you. I can't wait to just hold your face and kiss you until I can't breathe anymore. He responds, if only, with how crazy we both feel. Like we could only give Christina, that's you, yes, the worst of the worst and nobody else could. I know you hate her, I hate her even more. She's the problem to everything. I wish she would just drop dead. Your Honor, this is the message. Maybe a few months from now, we can make it seem like we drift apart or something, so if I ever run away again, they won't question you. 
Believe me, I hate her enough to know. I hate her enough. I know you have to despise this thing. Dropping dead ain't even enough for her, though she needs torture. So she wishes death. Torture her so bad her body is irreparable. Keep her alive so she's even more mentally unstable and kill her off as she lived her paranoid filled life. If you could do that and not go to jail, you know I'd let you, baby. Christina deserves the worst of the worst. Blah, blah, blah. You give me the best always since day one. You've sacrificed so much for me. I hope she gets more than fired. Let me see her on fire. I want to hear her screams out for help as her flesh burns and sticks to her ugly face. Now let me ask you, sir, as a therapist for youth, yes, are you perhaps thinking now that having her around your son may not be the best thing? It's not the, unhealth it's not the healthiest thing, no. Your Honor. Because if this is what she's writing your son, and your son's in love. I never saw Maybe that you had never heard this. I never you? saw that. Exactly. How do you know this isn't going to be just another one of those cases? You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind, both of you. You think you have the facts to make decisions that are so weighty and that will have such effect on people's lives, including your own son, and you don't have the facts. You guys need to run, not walk, to a civil courthouse to file a complaint for their interference in your parental rights. You need to talk to your lawyer about it, and you need to do it today so that it can get in front of a judge who will then order them not to have anything to do with your daughter. Quite frankly, I don't know how you can continue to work on this with two adults who have the right. hubris to think they know better and to continue to go against what you want as parents and what everyone is working towards in unification here. All yes. of the professionals, all of the cops, all of the probation officers, all of, all of the therapists, everyone's working towards a goal that they are stopping uh -huh. you from achieving. Yeah. So stop being a victim. Go to court and file a lawsuit to get the order that you want. You understand? Yes, in the meantime, I'm going to rule on what's in front of me here. You have a counterclaim for $2,000 against them for harassment. What's that about? About them um, threatening to kill me, my son. When? When he's looking for his daughter and she's no, there? No, after she was found to threaten to kill me, my kids, okay. and my But dad. after that, you continue to have her over and she's welcome there whenever you want because according to because you, it's perfectly the judge, legal. The and then he would go there. said it was okay. They right, so he everything. would go there and they he would... They know everything at Upstate. Yeah, they so know that how is his dealers? presence there is to kill you as opposed to to get his oh, daughter, which is what they keep buy, doing. Buy me a beer? What do no. I think? How, did you hear my question? All these threats. Did you hear my question? Did you hear my question? Why are you deducing that his presence in front of your house would be to kill you as opposed to to get his daughter from you, his 14-year-old daughter. She was already returned. I'm not talking about the big hiding incident oh, with okay. helicopters. I'm talking about after that. After that, the probation officer went to your house and she was there and you both face looked me in the face and she's welcome there anytime. It's perfectly legal and I'm gonna keep welcoming, wel welcoming her there. That's what the judge us. said. I'm not going against the judge's order. Do you hear what I said? Yeah. I'm talking about. I don't think I'm you do. I'm talking about real I judges. I think I'm talking to a freaking wall. That's what's happening here. I keep talking and nothing's going in your thick head. That's because you're, you're so busy God, trying to be right that you don't understand the position. Get out of my courtroom. Okay. I've had enough with your laughing. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Listen to me. That. I need everybody to listen to me because our contact here is going to be over. Okay. But you guys have to go back to your children who don't listen. And I don't mean to, I know that, I, I that when you have a child who has become ungovernable, that people get through this. That child will grow. That child one day is going to be a woman, a mother. She's going to have a job. And if there's a God, she's going to have her own children, right? Hopefully. And then her children will give her some trouble. <laughs> and that's the day she'll look back at the two of you and beg forgiveness. And, you know, it's just, this isn't going to last. So. But no. you don't, you know, while you're working on this so hard, the last thing you need are two 
unrepentant, smug other parents interfering. So I don't really care about an iPhone. I don't really care about Ugg boots. I don't really care mm. about a sweater. I care about lost wages because they hid your child. And when you sue for t the rest of that money for pain and suffering for making a false claim, I don't know whether they're the ones who made that false claim, but I sure as heck know they're the ones who had that child in their house and have caused you a great deal of pain and suffering. Mm. So I am ordering Mr. and Mrs. McManus to pay you the $5,000 cap that you are asking for in this courtroom. But again, it's not going to stop until you get that court order. On your counterclaim against them for $2,000, here's a shocker. No. I, I wish you the best of do. luck. Don't give up on her. We no, won't. Because if she feels, no, but I'm really, you know what? I'm actually talking to you right I now. I never will. I know. You're, yeah. You are her mother. There is no other I mother. am her mother. That lady isn't her mother. The lady who walked out isn't her mother. You are her mother. And she needs to feel like you're going to keep fighting. Okay? I will. You have to, you have to shine as a mother. Okay. Thank Good you, luck. Your Honor. Thank you. Well, in a riveting case, the plaintiff has prevailed. They're going to get the $5,000. Miss McManus, you just got leveled by the judge, too. What are you thinking right now? I have no comment right now. Pardon? No comment right now. No comment at all? No. Thank you, though. You know, you lost the case big time. I know. And it's not over. I know. You have more legal I know. issues facing you in court. I know. You, you could go to jail. I know. It's possible. I guess the question is, have you learned anything from all of this? You, you keep not, allowing her into your not, home. I didn't allow her in my home. My husband did. I'm not home. But I should steal my ground and not have her in my house anymore. You know, I hope you've learned something from this experience. Because, you know, in real other court, it could be worse. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. All right. All right, Mr. and Ms. Vasquez. This is really a rough, yeah. rough situation. No, I'm yeah. just happy. I want to thank the judge for, you know, letting the truth come out and seeing them for what they really are, you know, jerks. You know, oh. as parents, we have to work together. Our life was perfectly fine before this. We were a happy family, and we're going to continue to well, be Well, let's hope you can family. get there yeah. somehow, some way. We will. We'll Good be luck fine. to you. Just got to get rid of them. Okay. okay. Good luck to you. All thank right? you. Thank nice you. to meet you. Okay. Wow, Harvey. Okay, just so you know, Doug, they got money actually for emotional distress. They had said they were suing for pain and suffering. Just so you know, pain and suffering usually requires some kind of a physical injury that attaches to it. That's not the case here, but it is outrageous conduct, and therefore you get money for emotional distress. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff, Philip. He says he met the defendant at a restaurant where she works as a waitress. And when she was in a bind, he loaned her some money. A few weeks later, she got into another bind, and he gave her a picture of his credit card and loaned her more money. Unfortunately, she took his credit card number and charged $1,962.06 on it, then blocked his number and is trying to run out on the loans he gave her. So he's here suing her today for every penny of it. This is the defendant, Joanne. She says the plaintiff did give her money to help her out and told her she didn't have to pay him back. When she got on her feet, she told him she'd like to give him the money back. And he said she didn't have to if she had sex with him. She never expected anything like that regarding the plaintiff and owes him nothing because the money he gave her was a gift, not a loan. She's accused of taking money and not giving anything back. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court next case in the docket. The plaintiff met the defendant in a restaurant People's Court where he loaned her tons of money. Now she took his credit card number and went wild. The defendant says it was a gift. It's the case of coffee, tea, or me. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, All right, you are suing the defendant because according to you, she racked up $1,962 in charges on your credit card. How did she get your credit card? I give it to her. Why? <laughs> I known her since 2016. Okay. When she worked at a restaurant that we frequently often, and you know every time we'd go in, she'd wait on wait on us. Um, Who's I, us? My wife and I. Okay. 
But um, over the course of the next year, you know, we just become mutual friends. Did um, your wife know that you gave a young lady a credit yeah, card? Go she's on. very much aware of it. Is your wife here? No, she's not. Okay, go on. Um, and then in 2018, every year I get a Christmas bonus. I always try to share it with someone. Um, 2018. Oh, one time you shared $1,000 of your Christmas bonus <laughs> with this young lady, right? Yes. Did your yes. wife know about that? Yes. $1,000. And did you and your wife give it to her together so she wouldn't get the wrong idea? Um, I give her my credit card. Can I? Uh, no, I'm talking about the $1,000. No, it was, it, was a, it was all on the credit card. I did not give her any cash. Okay, I'm confused. Did you say he gave you $1,000? Yes, he did. $1,000 in cold, hard cash? No, as a tip. So he paid his, his tab at the restaurant and added a $1,000 tip on the tab. Yes, ma'am. Are you serious? Yes, ma'am. Wow. Is that what you meant by it was on a credit card? No. No. You still say you didn't give her a $1,000 tip? No, ma'am. Do can you have it. any evidence of that? I don't. Okay. What'd you do when you saw a $1,000 tip? I cried. With him, in front of him, thanking him? How did it work? I did. I, I thanked him before he left, and then they left, and I cried. With the whole restaurant up in arms about it and stuff, and ringing <laughs> bells and all that thing that they do when there's a big tipper? Or? <laughs> no, they no. weren't. All right. But, How old are you? Uh, I just turned 21. OK. Uh, let me ask you a question. Who's the lady next to you? This is my mom. Step on up, ma'am. Did you know that your daughter was getting a $1,000 tip from a man 20 years older than her? Didn't realize he was as old as he is. Didn't realize he was married. Um, but had she told you I got a $1,000 tip today? She told me about the tip. I didn't know the gentleman at the time. Didn't Did she know. tell you he gave me his credit card and I'm charging things on it? When it came to the credit card, she told me he had offered it. I told yeah, but her. Whether he offered it or not, what, was, what did you say to your daughter when you I told it? her, no, he's trying to buy you. Okay. Um, why are you accepting his generosity? What, what, what is your thinking? Just, hey, he offered it, I'm taking it? What, what's your thinking on this? Um, I, I turned it down a couple of times, but I was just in a really bad situation. And I. And let me tell you what a really bad situation is you can't eat. Like, before you're eating Alpo, you can resort to your mother because your mother's here with you at this lawsuit. So I know she's supportive. I know she gets involved. And so when you say bad situation, I don't know if it's really that bad. So how much did you rack up on his credit card? Um, I spent 1300 1300 And what was the 1300 for? 300 was for um, a bail bond for my friend, which we paid him back immediately. Okay. Do you have any evidence of paying him back the 300 I don't. Does that sound familiar? Must have amnesia because I don't, just like I don't remember $1,000, it was only two zeros behind that one. I don't remember three. Whenever Let me she ask said, you a question. <clears throat> you okay, hand a young lady your credit card. Yes. And she charges something on it. The yes. first month the statement comes in, what had she charged? Um, basically gas, the bail bondsman, more gas, McDonald's, Bojangles, shortstop, uh, Taco Bell, Gas, cigarettes, more gas. Why don't you tell her you can't use the card anymore? I took it back from her. Okay, and then, uh, so you took the card back from her, and then how were their additional charges then? They right. came in after that? <clears throat> they came in after that. She had made two payments. Um, how much did she pay, according to you? Uh, $130. $70 whenever she worked at nightclub, and another $60 at one of the restaurants you So she at. paid a total of 130 according to you? Yes, ma'am. And according to you, she racked up 1,572,006, not 1,300. Now, according to you, you will not pay him because what ends up happening? Tell me. He told me, I told him it would be a while for me to pay him back because I did move and I did get a new house. And he just told me he didn't want me to pay him back. He wanted me to do other stuff instead. Like what? He said he wanted to, like at the time, when he said that I owed him $600, he said he wanted to tie me up for like 600 minutes and just all this stuff. What else did he say? He said that his wife wanted me to like do stuff with her as well and just a bunch of other stuff. I, 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 I need to know what he said. He just said, don't pay me back the money and just we can work it out another way instead. You can do this. You can... Do, I don't know. What did you do when you heard that? Um, I said no, and then I blocked him. Okay. Did you tell anybody? Mm -mm. Did you call the police or call your mom or anybody else and tell them? When did this supposedly happen? Um, it was maybe like January, February. 
Okay. Did you ask for sexual favors from her? Do you believe this guy told his wife? No way. He's not telling his wife. Was he on the prowl? Yeah. 100%. 110%? 150%. Going inside the courtroom. There was one time whenever she worked at the men's club, I said, if you want, you can uh, start dancing. I said, you know, I would like a uh, lap dance. But that was where she was actually employed at a strip club where you get paid to do lap dances. Well, so, the establishment is supposed to get paid, right? Yes. Oh, it's a but you were telling her to work off. Her. No, no, no. I said not to work off. I just She was a waitress. I'm sorry. Hold on one second. You were telling her. To, I'll give you a chance to respond, but let him talk first, though, right? Yes. <laughs> According to you, she was a stripper. A no, dancer. she was. A, I said if she began, if she become a stripper at that time, she was a cocktail waitress. I said, if you become a uh, stripper, you know, I would enjoy a um, lap dance. Why would you say that to a 21 year old who's not? a dancer, except I can only think of one situation where requesting a lap dance would be acceptable, and that's when you're at a place that offers lap dances, not when you're talking to a 21-year-old waitress, right? Right. And the establishment she was working in was where you get lap dances. From waitresses? No. Some of the waitresses also um, dance as well. No, Does don't. she dance? She doesn't, know. Then she was talking about lap, it. Then you wouldn't get a lap dance, right? No, she and said. And so, do you say that to her when she's talking about it taking her a while to pay you back? No, no. That's when you. Well, when do you bring it up? Because she was never a lap dancer. So when do you bring it up? She was talking about her manager tried to get her to dance, and I was like, well, if you do dance, you know, I would accept a. Wouldn't mind having a lap dance, but that was because of where she was at, not privately or anything else. Where was, she, when you said that to her, where were you? She was actually making the first payment at the men's club in Raleigh. Okay. Um, why don't you not take money from a man unless your eyes are wide open? Because- Yes, ma'am. He's not Santa Claus, is he? No. Okay. So if we don't want to find ourselves, because I see you here, you're crying, you're shocked, you're appalled, you know, but I have to tell you, you know, the best course of action for you as a young woman is to always maintain a position of strength. I have zero problem with you working at, you know, a dancer's club. I have zero problem with you being a dancer if you want to be. I just want you to be in a position of strength and not, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So if you know you're taking a guy for a ride, then own that, okay? And if you're not taking him for a ride, don't accept his credit card because trust me, what he wants is probably a ride. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So he says what you charged was 157206. He says that you paid from that I'm supposed to subtract the 130, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you say you paid more. You say according to you you paid how much? I paid $300. Okay. And we also gave him that money for the bail. So Okay, so then that would leave you owing 900 and something. Not That's 300 funny. like your answer says, but 900 and something. So I'm going to find that she owes you and must pay you. $972.06 of that credit card bill. And maybe you could keep your credit card in your pants. Good luck. So, the plaintiff prevails. Both litigants get a little bit of a lecture from the judge. If you'll step over here. What do you think about what the judge just had to say to you? Um, I think I learned a really valuable lesson. And I'll... Never, ever put myself in a situation like that again. Because you sure did. I did. You should have learned this from your parents a long time ago. She should have. Should you have listened agree? to her mother. Yeah. Yes, definitely. You shocked to hear some of this testimony? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Most definitely. Well, you've learned a lesson. Yes, sir. Hard way to do it, but okay. Yes, sir. Thank Good luck so to you. Thank okay. You. Thank you very much. Well, you didn't get $1,900. Are you surprised? I'm sorry that some of this testimony came out in court today. What you, oh no! You know? I mean, it yeah, is. I mean, what look if, at you. You give her her credit card. What kind of a guy does that? Uh, one that is actually good-hearted. Really? Yes. And you weren't expecting anything in return for that? Oh, well, I would have. Uh, well, at one any, point, I mean, they did ask for something. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, Doug, I, I gotta tell you, first of all, I mean, the guy's story just does not hold water. But the second thing is, when you watch this case, watch it carefully, because this is what not to do on both sides.